When I originally built this, I used a 5 8 inch shaft. It was actually a 5 8 inch bolt welded onto a piece of steel. I took that off later and I changed the mechanism up here, but I retained the 5 8 inch shaft. And unfortunately, that really is not strong enough for the tension that this bandsaw is under when it has, especially when it has a bigger, thicker blade on there. You want to put enough tension on there to keep it nice and straight here. I decided to change it to a one inch shaft and that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. Okay, I'm going to release the tension on the blade. And the way that works in this bandsaw is that the, the bottom lifts up and down. The top wheel doesn't move. And I've got a crank in the back there. To do that, I'll take this off. Start to take this wheel off. It starts with this short bolt that I have going through here that locks this nut. I thought about making a new wheel for this, but I think it'd be a waste of time. Uh, this wheel works perfectly. And as you can see, it doesn't have the typical uh, inner tube tire on here. What I have on here instead is a layer of clear silicone that acts as a tire. And I find that to be very good. It worked out very well. I tried this a couple years ago, actually, and it's been holding up well since. I got a couple of different ways that I could mount. I could, I could do this arrangement here. The first is that I could mount these um, flange bearings directly onto this wheel and then fix the shaft in a block out back. And uh, that's easy enough to do. Uh, but I was thinking that it might be better. And I really don't have the clearance, not with this, the way this is arranged, for this big bearing on the back here plus the lock collar that goes on there. You can see how much thicker that is than this plate back here. I really don't have the space for that. So what I was thinking, I would mount the shaft onto the wheel and then put these bearings out back in the block. And that would be about the same amount of work, actually. All I'd have to do is fix the shaft to the wheel in some way. And I was thinking about that, how I could do that. One is to weld an end plate right onto the shaft and then mount that onto here. But the problem comes when you want to try to make that square. I mean, it's difficult to do. So I have this thing here. This is what's uh, is a coupler, um, a flexible coupling. This is one inch on this side, and then I have one for five eighths on the other. And I bought these, I don't know, four or five years ago to build a drum sander, which I never got around to building. It was going to be a direct drive motor on the side, drum here, and then these would connect it to the shaft on the drum would be one inch and this would go on this end. The motor had a five eighths inch shaft and the other thing goes in there. And then there's a rubber uh, piece that goes in here that allows some flex to happen between the motor and the drum, which is kind of important for that kind of thing. But anyway, I never got around to doing that, but I could use this. And the way I could use this is that I could take a steel plate and actually screw it onto this from the back and then put it through this side over here and it bolts directly on. That way, any extra sticking out is on this side over here and I've got lots of space to accommodate there and it'll be just completely flush on the back here. And I would have to bolt the plate onto this or screw it on because I'm pretty sure that this is cast iron and I can't weld that. I don't have the stuff to weld that. I cut a piece of shaft that's probably longer than I need it to be, but then I can trim it off after, that's not a big deal. I'm calling this shaft, but it's not actually shaft, proper shafting. It's just one inch round bar, and it's a pretty good fit on here. I got that set screw tightened up, but it's a little bit slack, just a very small amount, but I don't think it's a problem because when you tighten the set screw, and I'm gonna put a, a key in here as well, I'm gonna have to make one for it, when you tighten the set screw, it pulls that side up tight against the shaft, so that will eliminate any possibility of wobble. What I have to do now is I need to cut these paws off here because I really don't need them.
Cutting off those uh, things that stick out there confirmed that this is indeed cast iron so I wouldn't be able to weld it. So that's done. Next thing I need to do is cut out the plate that I want to fasten to the back of this. Now the plate's going to be 1 8 inch steel and I've got that right here. And I've marked out a five inch square on here. I've also marked the center. And what that'll let me do is clamp this block that I've got a one inch hole in directly down on that. And that'll guide this hole saw. And of course it doesn't have a center drill. So I need something to guide it. I got the hole cut and it's a uh, Pretty good fit on the shaft, not too slack. I can work with that. What I want to do next though, is I want to glue this collar thing that I have here onto that plate before I go any further. And then I can drill the holes through the bolts and put those in without worrying about this thing moving all over the place. I just got to clean up the very sharp edges on here and then I can drill the holes through for the bolts that are going to hold that collar onto this plate. The next thing I need to do here is to make a keyway in the end of that shaft so it, you know, lines up mostly with the keyway that's in here. Once again, I've got one of these countertop uh, nuts that fits, well, it fits really slack in this one, but I'm gonna try to cut the slot in the shaft so it fits a little bit tighter. The main thing is that there's something in there that stops the thing from rotating. I'll also put a little bit of epoxy in there when I go to put this together. Uh, remember I said before that the shaft is a little bit slack fit on this collar. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some epoxy in there just to get around there and try to fill up that gap a little bit. And then if I can find my key, which is right here, then I can take that and slip it in like so, and then tap it down with my pliers. Okay, that looks like a good solid connection. I've got my Allen keys here and I'll tighten up the set screw and that what that does is it actually pushes on that key that I just made and pushes it tight into that keyway. Okay, I got the hub off, no problem after I cut the nuts away. And now I've got this to mount on here. There's a couple of different ways I could do this. I could go from the front and put the shaft through and then have this part sticking out on the front and have the plate on the front to bolt on or I can come from behind and then the plate will bolt on from the back here all the way through. And I think that's the way I'm going to do it. <sighs> Got to file a little bit on the back to chamfer the edge a little bit because of the epoxy that's banked up around the collar. It's keeping it from sitting perfectly flat. And that feels a lot better now. I made this plate five inches square, which is the same as the hub plates that were on there were made out of plywood. So it lines up with the marks that I already have on there. So that's gonna allow me to locate it very close to where the other one was. And I won't have as much messing around to do when I wanna to try to center it on the shaft here. So I've got this laid out. I laid out marks on here for the bolt holes and I'm gonna drill those out on the drill press for 3 8 inch bolts. And then I can use that as a template to drill the holes in the wheel. But then I'm gonna use a step drill to make the holes slightly bigger. So I'll have some room for adjustment there. Doesn't need a whole lot. And the fastener that I'm going to use 3 8 inch threaded rod because I don't have any 3 8 inch bolts that are the correct length. Okay, I've got it set up here with the flange bearing, set on my table here, just holding it in place to see how it spins. And uh, it doesn't look bad at all, actually. 
It's got a little bit of a wobble that I'm not actually going to worry about. The main thing is that it seems to be centered on the shaft perfectly and the balance seems good too. I think I'm going to call this good, tighten up the nuts and then start working on the block that these flange bearings go into. I think I'm going to fill up that gap around that collar with epoxy as well just to add even more strength. I don't ever anticipate taking this thing apart for maintenance so I'm not too concerned about having to take it apart in the future. Before I can start building the block that I'm going to be mounting those flange bearings on, I have to do some disassembly on my saw. First of which is to take the upper blade guide off. And then I'm going to take off that other wooden tilt mechanism that I made before. And that's just screwed in. And then the steel back panel has to come off and that's just screwed on as well. I'm pretty sure that the other pieces of steel in the middle of this frame here are going to be in the way, so I'm just going to cut them out. That new bearing holder is going to be considerably bigger than the old one, and it's simply not going to fit in this space with these things here. I really don't have a fixed plan for this. I'm doing this on the fly, basically as I go. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to figure this part out, and then I'm going to come back and show you what I've done. Okay, so here's what I came up with, roughly, this plywood, these plywood arms that you see here are temporary. I just want to demonstrate how this thing works. Uh, basically, they hold this center part up, and what the center part is able to do is tilt like this. I started with these pieces of angle iron that bolt directly to the back of the flange bearing, the inside one. And then the outside one is bolted directly to that with these pieces of threaded rod. They couple them together and keep them exactly the same distance apart. And to make this pivot, what I did was I added pins on the sides here. And what those are, are just pieces of 5 8 inch round bar that I drilled a hole through and I bolted it onto the angle. And I did that mainly to hold it exactly where it's supposed to go until I could bring this out and weld it. The next thing I need to do is rebuild these struts, but I want to use solid wood this time. I made the mock-up from scrap plywood and it's not really stiff enough. And speaking of plywood, that's what I'll be using for the back panel this time. And I'm just going to use some self-drilling screws to fasten it onto the metal frame. And I'm also driving wood screws into those hardwood struts. Now to adjust the tracking, I need to make a block that has a T-nut inside that fits into the top of those steel angles. And then there's another piece of plywood that gets fastened on the outside for the tracking knob to push against. And now that I have it so that it will work again, I'm going to put a blade back on. And I'm also going to add a block right below the upper wheel. And I'm going to use that as a tool rest for a quarter inch chisel so that I can carefully retrue the wheel. Now I didn't have to do very much here because like I said before, it was very close. And then with that done, I could put the silicone back on the wheel because that all came off when I retrued it, of course. And this is just to pump it on in a solid bead and then smear it out over the wheel relatively evenly. So I left the silicone to dry overnight and then the next day I put the blade back on and I tried it out.
I would say that this is a success. And even though this took a while to do, I am a lot more confident with how everything is up on top now than I was before. And I know that these bearings will hold up a lot better than the ones that I had on there originally. 